If you want to go back to the phone lines, we'll talk to Crystal next. She's listening in Oakland, California. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Hank. It's so good to speak with you today. Likewise. Um, <laughs> I'm really interested in a couple of questions I have. When did the pre-trib rapture doctrine emerge, and who was responsible for it? Yeah, well, I think it's really important to recognize that this idea is a unique spin that was placed on millennialism in the 19th century. So it's a very modern idea. Now, the fact that it is modern doesn't mean that it's not true, but I would say that we do well to examine it carefully. In terms of who was the popularizer of this pre-tribulational rapture, it was a John Nelson Darby. He added a unique twist to the dating game, which was very prevalent at that time, by introducing the concept of a secret coming seven years prior to the second coming of Christ. And therefore, you could only determine the time of the second coming after the time of Christ's secret coming. And initially, that proved to be a damper to the dating game, but later dispensationalists, they found a variety of new rules to ensure that it would continue to be played. But this is, again, a very modern uh, novel notion in terms of the historic Christian faith. This is one of those secondary issues. So the timing of the tribulation, the meaning of the millennium, these are issues that we can debate vigorously, but ultimately don't have to divide over. I see. My husband and I are exploring a new church right now, and the denomination clearly believes in a pre-trib rapture and a thousand-year reign. And after hearing you speak about this, we're inclined to agree with your uh, interpretation of the Scriptures, and so we're concerned about whether we should actually pursue this church and membership. But given what you just said, that that's a secondary issue. I feel more comfortable about continuing with this church and observing their practices to see how doctrinally sound they are. They seem to be fairly conservative, and that's what we're looking for. I think it's really important at the end of the day that people are humble, which is to say that they're willing to examine closely the scriptures and say, that's my North Star. There are some that say, I don't want to have egg on my face. This is what I've been taught. This is what I've been teaching. And therefore, I I don't want to re-examine this. But the real issue ultimately is what does scripture say? And I think it's very important for teachers, even when it comes to secondary issues, that they give a proper method of the art and science of biblical interpretation. And John Nelson Darby clearly did not. In fact, he was castigated at first by the Plymouth Brethren themselves because of his unique spin on millennialism. Okay. Well, thank you so very much. You have a great rest of the day.